The PPCRV hopes to release the results of its analysis on Comelec Transparency Server audit logs next week. Opposition supporters questioned the Commission on Elections over the alleged anomalies in the 2019 midterm elections. Dismissed Food and Drug Administration Director General Nella Shared Puno denies allegations she is involved in graft and corruption. And two Filipino a cappella groups bag top prizes in Moscow Spring a cappella festival in Russia. Good evening. To figure out the root cause of the seven-hour delay in the vote transmission last Monday and other technical glitches that occurred in the midterm elections, the PPCRV will now examine logs from the Commission on Elections Transparency Server. My Bermudez will tell us why. The Parish Pastoral Council for Responsible Voting, or PPCRV, has already received data logs from the Transparency Server of the Commission on Elections, or COMELEC. The data is important to check the root cause of the seven-hour delay in the transmission of votes in the evening of the election day, May 13. Former PPCRV Chairperson Tita de Villa, PPCRV member Dr. William Yu and other political parties, together with information technology or IT experts, are present during the turnover. PPCRV will examine three things using those data. Titignan po natin, after 6.15 ng gabi ng May 13, uh, pumapasok ba talaga ang datos na nanggagaling sa mga VCM? Titignan po natin kung kompleto ang mga datos na yan from 6.15 hanggang uh, nag-up ulit ang mga tally board ng 1 uh, in the morning. Ang pangalawa po nating titignan ay kung uh, Ano ba talaga ang nangyari at namatay po ang uh, tally boards natin, hindi nakatanggap ng information. So, uh, nandiyan din po yan sa logs na sinusuri natin ngayon. Ang pangatlo po ay titignan naman natin ang, kung kompleto ba ang data ng transparency server. But the PPCRV still await Comelex Go signal for them to access the central server. PPCRV Chairperson Myla Villanueva said their team of information technology or IT experts will work over the weekend to analyze the logs in an attempt to get to the bottom of the issue. The PPCRV is looking to release next week the results of their analysis. Comelec on Thursday granted PPCRV's request to access the logs of Transparency Server to probe the seven-hour delay in the display of electronically transmitted election results following the poll body's initial output on election day. Last Monday, election observers expressed alarm after the PPCRV and media's partial unofficial counts were not updated since the server received votes from 0.38% of clustered precincts by 6 p.m. Comelec later explained that the application, which is supposed to transmit data from the transparency server to the PPCRV terminals and media networks, had encountered an error. As of 4.36 p.m. today, 26,800 electronic results were already processed at the command center. This is equivalent to 30.61%. Match rate is still at 99.98%. Aside from audit logs, the agency also asked Comelec to provide them data from its central server to see if they match the data received from the transparency server. PPCRV expects to complete the manual encoding of election returns and partial unofficial tally by the end of May. My Bermudez, Zeman TV News and Rescue, Manila. Re-electionist Senator Cynthia Villar and the Anti-Crime and Terrorism Community Involvement and Support or ACT CIS party list are still leading the senatorial and party list race respectively based on the latest partial and unofficial count of the Parish Pastoral Council for Responsible Voting or PPCRV. As of 5.04 p.m., Villar has over 25 million votes, followed by fellow re-electionist Senator Grace Poe with over 21.8 million votes while others, mostly President Rodrigo Duterte-backed candidates, also retained their places in the top 12 of the senatorial elections. Former Special Assistant to the President Bongo, the gig representative Pia Cayetano, 
former Bureau of Corrections Chief Bato de la Rosa, Sani Angara, Lito Lapid, Aimee Marcos, Francis Tolentino, Bong Revilla, Coco Pimentel, Nancy Binay. Meanwhile, Act CIS is still in the number one spot with over 2.6 million votes followed by Bayan Muna, Ako Bicol, Sibak, Ang Provinciano, Juan Pacman, Marino, Provinciano Ako, Senior Citizens, Magsasaka. The daughter of slain and former Mayor Antonio Halili wins as the local chief executive in Tanawan City, Batangas. Meanwhile, the board of canvassers proclaim all the winning candidates in Bulacan and Zamboanga City. Dante Amento will tell us why. Angelica Sweet Halili, daughter of former Tanawan Batangas Mayor Antonio Halili, is the new mayor of the city after winning 41,757 votes. Halili defeated five other candidates in the city mayoralty race. According to Halili, she will continue the programs promised by her late father, such as the construction of a hospital in the city. But the mayor-elect said she has no plans to continue her father's walk of shame campaign. Pagdating sa drug-related na problem, that is the job of the PNP. Meanwhile, the Board of Canvassers has proclaimed the winning governor, congressman, and board member in Bulacan. Incumbent Vice Governor Daniel Fernando is the newly elected governor of the province. Lahat ng ating mga uh, priority projects sa ating lalawigan ay ating pagpapatuloy. At ang pagbibigay din ng, uh, ng, uh, ng, ng, ng scholars sa ating mga kabataan. Meanwhile, Attorney Henry Villarica has been proclaimed as the representative of the 4th District of Bulacan. All winning candidates in the province have been proclaimed today. Elsewhere in Zamboanga City, all the winning candidates have also been named. However, Congressman Celso Lobrigat's camp had filed a petition to postpone the proclamation of the winning candidates because of the issue of anomaly in the elections. But the Board of Canvassers denied the petition and continued with proclamation. Uh, we are very poor compared to them. So if you ask me who's capable of vote buying, definitely it's not us. More important, we have to sustain the security of Zamboanga City because that is very primordial. The winning candidates appeal for unity for the sake of all Zamboangueños. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The newly elected mayor of San Juan City lays out his plan on how to transform the city into a smart city. He also asks his opponents to unite and support his plans for the benefit of the people of San Juan. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. San Juan City Mayor-elect Francis Zamora contemplates his plan on how to make San Juan better. In the UNTV program, Get It Straight with Daniel Razon today, Zamora expressed that he wants to make the residences of San Juan City digitally connected through his smart city project which will provide free Wi-Fi. A mobile application will be created so that the citizens can easily access the government's services like the assistance of policemen and firefighters. You can have an account as a San Juan resident mm. which uh, will enable you to communicate with the city government. Zamora also wants to give priority to San Juan residents when it comes to job opportunities by passing an ordinance. Halimbawa ko yan, Sa Green Hills lamang, libo-libo ang tiyangge. Mm -hmm. Kung ang tindera ng tiyangge, puro taga San Juan, ibig sabihin, libo-libo na agad yung mabibigyan mo ng trabaho. Part of Zamora's projects is to improve the services of the government hospital in San Juan and create a business district in Green Hills like what Makati and Taguig did. This is apart from a high-rise housing project for his constituents. So we encourage investors to come in. Bago na yung mamamalakad, bago na yung leadership. Zamora is asking his opponents to support the new leadership of San Juan for the success of the city projects. The Estrada reign in San Juan lasted for 50 years and has been broken through the recent elections. Zamora admitted that he was saddened when some of his supporters had allied with Estradas after the 2016 elections when he ran in the city mayoralty race for the first time. Kung maraming nang iwan, maraming nang hindi nang iwan. Mm. Kaya sa lahat po nang hindi nang iwan, maraming maraming salamat po. Sa... Yeah. Maraming salamat sa mga hindi nang iwan, manatili kayo. Oh.
Ito naman, yun ang mga nang iwan. Oh. Okay. So, mga nang iwan. Konsensya na lang po nila. Okay. <laughs> so, Ray Pilayo, UNTV, Use and Rescue, Quezon City. Supporters of the opposition group on Friday questioned the Commission on Elections or COMELEC on alleged anomalies in the May 13 midterm elections. Members of Tindig Pilipinas and the silent majority gathered in front of the Philippine International Convention Center on PICC in Pasay City where the COMELEC is canvassing votes for the senatorial and party list elections. The groups were protesting the technical glitches that were encountered during the polls, such as defective secure digital SD cards and vote counting machines, VCM, as well as the seven-hour delay in transmitting data from COMELEC's transparency server. Members of said cost-oriented groups who were chanting what happened to the midterm elections COMELEC repeatedly during their picket were also demanding the poll body to explain the alleged irregularities that cast doubts on the credibility of the midterm polls. They also sought to question the poll body for its alleged mishandling and inaction of supposed anomalies observed, including the designation of Nationalista Party as the minority party, the disenfranchisement of voters, and the blatant commission of pre-campaign and campaign violations of some candidates such as electioneering and vote buying. Now let's take a look at the new and returning government officials in Metro Manila and in Luzon. Re-electionist Marcy Teodoro retains post as Marikina City Mayor. The Tiancos maintain power in the votas as Toby Tianco is elected mayor and brother John Ray Tianco is elected House Representative. Luis Campos Jr., the husband of Makati City Mayor Abigail Binay, wins as Makati's 2nd District Representative. Meanwhile, in the provinces, Manny Pacquiao's chief trainer Restituto Buboy Fernandez wins as vice mayor of Polangi Town in Albay. Siriaco Gato Jr. defeats former budget secretary Florencio Buch Abad in the Batanes congressional race. Nara Town in Palawan elects Randy Danao as mayor, ending the 30-year rule of the Demaala clan. Daraga Vice Mayor Victor Perete wins as mayor, beating detained Mayor Carlwin Baldo. Christine Singson Mihan is proclaimed Ilocosur 2nd District Representative. Noel Rosal and Robert Oscar Cristobal win as mayor and vice mayor of Legaspi City, respectively. Antonio Oni Ferrer wins his third term as General Trias Mayor in Cavite. And indigenous farmer Otot Odi is proclaimed mayor of Rizal Town in Palawan. Two Filipino singing groups bring home the bacon from an international a cappella singing competition held in the cosmopolitan capital of Russia. Nina Armilio will tell us why. The Philippine Embassy in Russia congratulates two Filipino a cappella groups that stood out in the recently concluded Moscow Spring a cappella festival 2019, which was held from May 1 to 12 in Moscow. Five member a cappella go from Bulacan was hailed the first prize winner in the competition joined in by 195 groups from 26 countries. Another contemporary a cappella group who named themselves Pinopella bagged the third prize in the international contest. Hi, we are Pino Pinopela. Si Hi, I am Juliet Bahala. Hello, I'm Anthony Castillo. Hi, ako po si JJ Pimpinio. Ako po si Rox Omilda. At ako po si Paolo Campos. And we are Pino Pinopela. The group expresses thanks to all the support they get and for being one of the representatives of the Philippines. Sobrang grateful namin na ang daming pwedeng mag-represent ng Pilipinas or ng IP, pero napili tayo na i-invite. So we are very grateful and thankful na nandito tayo sa Moscow at nakapag-uwi pa tayo ng parangal. According to Philippine Ambassador to Russia, Ambassador Carlos Soreta, he and the Filipino community in Russia are very proud of our winning kababayans. Dalawa lang po silang sumali mula sa Pilipinas, ngunit nakuha nila yung top three po, yung first and second and third place. We're very proud po. At uh, nagpapasalamat din kami sa Filipino community dito sa Russia dahil sila po ay all-out support sa ating dalawang competitors. Our kababayans in Russia also think the two singing groups who can be considered as Pinoy pride. Hindi ko inaasahan na may magpe-perform ng mga Pilipino dito sa Moscow, Russia at nakakatawa dahil makikita mo silang pinapalakpakan ng mga ibang lahi. 
Ang miss mo talaga yung performance ng Pinopela kasi habang pinapanood ko siya sila, na, talaga nagkakaroon ako ng goosebumps talaga. Kasi nakaka-proud. Yung makita mo yung kapwa mong Pilipino nagpe-perform sa stage tapos yung ibang mga lahi tawang-tawa sa performance. Tapos ang gusto sila pa yung nakakuha nung third prize dun sa competition. So talagang bilang Pilipina, napaproud talaga ako. Meanwhile, Pinopela has this advice to Filipinos who also want to make their country proud through their talents. Huwag uh, kayo mag-give up at maniwala lang kayo sa sarili ninyo. Ano lang talaga, dadalhin kayo ng sipag at syaga yeah, sipag kung saan-saan. Magugulat na lang kayo. Yan. Hindi nyo expect kung saan kayo dadalhin ng, ng sipag at syaga. The Moscow Spring A Cappella Festival, an open international competition for a cappella singers organized by the Moscow government project, took place this year for the third time. And according to the Philippine Embassy in Russia, this is the first time that Filipino a cappella groups participated in the contest and the group's first time to compete in Russia. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. On June 30, the 18th Congress of the Philippines will have new members following the 2019 midterm elections. Find out which names are emerging as the possible next House Speaker. As Grace Kassin reports. Before the May 13 elections, Lord Alan Velasco, Martin Romualdez, Alan Peter Cayetano, and Pantalon Alvarez surfaced as the name that may belong to the next leader of the House of Representatives. Velasco and Romualdez had both been endorsed by Hugpong ng Pagbabago Chairperson Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio. However, according to a previous report, President Rodrigo Duterte personally wanted Cayetano to be the next House Speaker. While the President's first choice House Speaker, Davao del Norte 1st District Representative Pantalon Alvarez, will be coming back to Congress. But since former Senator Loren Legarda and presidential son, former Davao City Vice Mayor Paulo Duterte, have been elected, the list of the possible House Speaker has just gotten longer. According to Partido Democratico Pilipino Lakas ng Bayan o PDP Laban Campaign Manager Senator Manny Pacquiao, they will wait for all the candidates to be proclaimed first before the party decides on who will be the leader in the both houses of Congress. As of now, the Hogpong ng Pagbabago Chairperson has no official statement yet on her bet. But in a previous statement, she said she is for the candidate who supports his father. Well, I uh, choice of one, but... Uh... Ang ginatanaw na mo is kung kinsa ang uh, supporter ni uh, President Duterte because uh, we need uh, the House of Representatives uh, to move uh, towards the direction of uh, the President. In a statement, Liberal Party Secretary General Congressman Kit Belmonte says that tyranny will continue in the lower house since only 18 Liberal Party congressmen are about to win in the midterm elections. Meanwhile, the palace has no statement yet on who will be the next House Speaker of the Eden Congress. Grace Kassin, UNTV News and Rescue. Now that the national canvassing is about to be over and almost all winning candidates in the local level have been proclaimed, let us know what training or seminars must a neophyte lawmaker undergo. That's Joanna no reports. One of the most talked about issues these days are the first-time lawmakers who made it to the so-called Magic 12 in the senatorial race. Among the newbie senators to be are former Philippine National Police Chief Retired General Ronald Bato de la Rosa, former Special Assistant to the President Bongo, and former Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA Chairman Francis Tolentino. Just recently, Bato de la Rosa has said in an interview that he wants to take a seminar on lawmaking. The University of the Philippines National College of Public Administration and Governance, or UPNC PAG, is an institution known for providing trainings and lectures for neophyte lawmakers. In their seminar, first-time politicians are taught how to draft bills and how to file them, and how does the bill become a law. They are also taught about the rules in the committees they may handle, and how does the committee conduct an investigation. The seminar is a week long and is not mandatory. A neophyte lawmaker has the prerogative to decide whether to take the seminar or not. But for election lawyer attorney George Irving Garcia, it is better if the secretariats of both houses of Congress are the ones orienting the new solids. Halimbawa, committee, 
ano ang proseso sa committee, paano mag-issue ng sabina, paano mag-interpolate ng mga ng mga appear sa committee, ano yung mga rights na dapat i-observe doon. Walang pinakamagandang mag-lecture doon kung hindi yung mismong mga committee. Kasi sa totoo lang, iba yung hands-on eh, experience, iba yung naandu na mismo. Among the district representatives who had undergone the UPNCPAG training is late 4th District Representative Lucy Torres Gomez, Batangas 6th District Representative Vilma Santos Recto, and Bagong Generasyon Party List Representative Bernadette Herrera D. On the official Facebook page of UPNCPAG, they announced that their training program will run from May until August. Apart from the neophyte lawmakers, re-electionists are also urged to take the seminar. For his part, Senate President Tito Soto III has said earlier, they are ready to help the new members of the Senate. Merong nakaprepare ang Senate Secretary at Dagi, even previously. Between after the elections, they, they, we are ready for any conferences, orientations, meetings with the members of the new Senate or new senators or their staff. Hindi man sila mga staff nila. So, pagdating yan, pwede ka namang mag-review uh, mag eh. Pwede ka namang mag-aaral eh. And instead of concentrating on how to create laws, for Attorney Garcia, it is better if the new congressmen and senators focus on the real situation in our society and how to strictly enforce laws. Ano-anong batas meron, meron na tayo? Ano yung mga batas na wala pa tayo? Ano yung mga problema ng bayan na kinakailangan pagtuunan na hindi mo kinakailangan magawa ng batas dahil meron na? Kasi maya-maya kasi, may mga pinapanukala sila mga batas, tapos yung mga pinapakala nila, replication na pala ng existing na. Attorney Garcia added that in case the current government structure shifts to federalism, we already have available seminars on this for lawmakers. But he reiterates that federalism should be clear and be understood by all Filipinos. John Anano, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. Dismissed Food and Drug Administration Director General Nella Charade Puno says she is ready to face corruption allegations against her. Meanwhile, Philippine Charities Sweepstakes Office's Sandra Cam requests President Rodrigo Duterte to relieve her from the post. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. Nella Charade Puno thanks President Rodrigo Duterte for the opportunity he had given her to serve as the Director General of the Food and Drug Administration or FDA. The FDA, which is under the management of the Department of Health, has a mandate to monitor and regulate the flow of food and drugs in the Philippines to ensure the safety and health of the public. In a statement, she received her letter of termination yesterday. However, Puno said she takes exception to the mention of the so-called corruption allegations since she is not aware of any official investigations or legal proceedings against her. Yesterday, Presidential Spokesperson Salvador Panelo revealed that her termination is in line with the President's continuing mandate to eradicate graft and corruption and to ensure that public officials and employees conduct themselves in a manner worthy of public trust. Puno, for her part, maintains she is ready to face any allegations against her. Puno is the first official dismissed by the President weeks after his repeated warnings of planning series of dismissals against alleged corrupt officials. The Palace, as well as the Department of Health or DOH, have not mentioned about any particular details on Puno's dismissal. The DOH also has expressed support to President Duterte's campaign to eradicate graft and corruption in all government agencies. Health Undersecretary Rolando Domingo assumes as the FDA officer in charge until the appointment of a new FDA Director General. Meanwhile, Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office or PCSO Board of Directors member Sandra Cam wants President Duterte to relieve her from her post because of this organization and issues of corruption in her agency. She also wishes the President to have a revamp among the PCSO officials. I'm appealing to the president. I love our country. You know that. And I love you for being firm of your advocacy of anti-corruption. Mr. President, I want to meet with you. At ako hihingi po. Na i-relieve mo na lang ako dito sa kinakuupuan ko dahil hindi ko na kaya 
ang korupsyon dito sa ahensyang ito. Sandra Kam was appointed by President Duterte as a member of the PCSO Board of Directors in December 2017. Rosa Licoz, UNTV, News and Rescue, Philippines. Amid a diminished diplomatic presence in Canada, Filipinos in the North American country have varying reactions on the recall of the Philippine ambassadors and consuls there. Nina Armilio will tell us why. The president of a Filipino community in Canada is not concerned over the recall of the Philippines diplomatic corps in Canada. It can be noted that Foreign Affairs Secretary Teddy Luxin Jr. has ordered the recall of the Philippine ambassador and consuls in Canada after its government missed the May 15 deadline of shipping back their waste, which has been in the Philippines since 2013 and 2014. Cesar Manuel, the president of the Filipino Association of Montreal and Suburbs, said that with this move, the Philippine government only shows it is not going easy on the issue in Canada's garbage illegally shipped to the Philippines. He argued, however, that the Filipinos working and living in Canada will be affected by the recall because getting assistance for consular transactions will be difficult. Ang magiging problema lang naman doon ay yung transaksyon ng mga ating mga OSW, maapektuhan sila dahil magiging imbalito yung oras na pagpunta nila doon dahil wala mag-aasigan sa kanila. Meanwhile, other Filipinos have varying reactions. Like Elenita Evangelista, a permanent resident in Toronto, she said the recall will have an adverse effect on delivering assistance to Filipinos in Canada. Kasi sa dami ko nang pumupunta rito sa consulate, eh, eh ngayon sa pangasa ngayon, kulang pa ho sila roon para asistahan yung mga taong Pilipino. Eh tapos babawasan pa ho nila. O eh, eh magsisiksikan na yung mga tao. Kaya hindi ho ako payag. Filipinos in Canada hope that the relationship between the Philippines and the North American country will be better as the number of Filipinos there increases. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. Trend-setting foodies in Los Angeles are the first to go buggy for ant larvae thanks to a series of exclusive dinners featuring Mexico's version of caviar. Abby Valdez will tell us why. A Los Angeles chef is taking ants from the picnic blanket to the frying pan. Chef Fernando Villa Gomez is putting the Mexican delicacy of escamoles or ant larvae on his menu for a limited time. Confident the American palate will embrace what he calls Mexican caviar. Ant larvae are the second phase of development of the ant. The queen lays eggs, which become long, semi-transparent, maggot-like larvae before transforming into pupae and then fully grown ants. The larvae Via Gomez uses come from nests in the roots of agave plants in his home state of Guanajuato, Mexico. The cordon blue trained chef traveled back there to harvest the larvae and learn from indigenous people how to prepare them the traditional way. Then he added his own spin with butter and white wine from his French training and corn herbs and tomatoes from his Mexican background. He serves the dish with tortillas flavored with fresh cactus. It's crazy, crazy, cra crazy delicious for real. I mean, it's a new experience. It's like when make, some people, they never eat a real sushi. They like, what the heck is like, and they are afraid. They kind of like, how am I gonna eat that? Like, and then when they eat it, they never go back. <laughs> Fia Gomez says the ant larvae have a nutty, buttery taste, cook like a grain and have the texture of a fish. They also pick up an herbal flavor from the agave where the ants nest. 
man, the texture itself, it kind of reminds me of a very, very soft uh, pressurized bean. Um, it's a little bit, it's like smooth and creamy and yeah, it has a little bit of a texture like a bean. Um, but I absolutely love it. I would definitely eat this again. But what I love about it is um, you can definitely taste that texture of the creaminess and butteriness. Although escamales have been enjoyed in Mexico since pre-Columbian times, Mia Gomez says only high-end restaurants serve them today due to the high cost of the delicacy. He says his supplier sells to restaurants at 180 US dollars per kilo. While Villa Gomez hopes his escamales will bring adventurous eaters to the doors of his restaurant, the dish will have a limited run. He has enough larvae for three days of dinners from May 17 to 19, and then they will be gone for good. Abby Valdez, UNTV News and Rescue. The National Board of Canvassers say they might be able to finish the canvassing of votes for the senatorial and party list elections tomorrow. Meanwhile, the Commission on Elections confirmed they will proclaim the winning senators and party list groups on the same day. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The Commission on Elections, or COMELEC, has received 99.15% of the election returns as of today. This is equivalent to 85,044 out of 85,769 total election returns. As of 4 o'clock this afternoon, the National Board of Canvassers, or NBOC, has tallied 145 certificates of canvas or COCs out of the 167 that need to be tallied. 22 COCs are yet to be counted and the NBOC may be done with the canvassing tomorrow. Komelec also explained that they will have to do the proclamation of the winning senators and partidist groups at the same time. The date will still have to be announced by the poll buddy. The NBOC will still have to tally all the election results of the elections for party list before finalizing the date of the proclamation. Invitations have been sent out yet. Um, that might have been a verbal indication of when the uh, when the proclamation could happen at the earliest it's like a heads up but again no formal invitation has been issued yet there are still some uh, some matters to be settled one of the directions that we're going in is one proclamation for both Senate and party list winners. So it does take some time. Magkasama. Okay? So hindi tayo pwede magmadali. Meanwhile, Kamala clarifies the National Citizens Movement for Free Elections or NAMFREL's claim that they have no idea about the transmission server used in the transmission of the election results. Comelec spokesman director James Jimenez added they have proof of the minutes that NAMFREL is aware of the transmission server's function. To make sure that the use of the transmission router was secure. Number one, that the data would not be stored. Number two, that the data would not be remotely accessible. And number three, that the use of the TR must be subject to the local source code review. Jimenez also emphasized that the transmission server only serves as traffic cop and once data are transmitted, they must be deleted and secondly, must be forwarded as soon as possible not to exceed one hour. The transmission server, Jimenez reiterated, is never a facility to store data. This was voted on and, and uh, the solution, the adoption of the solution was actually voted on and Namfrel was actually part of the voting. And the voting, the result of the voting was unanimous. So, again, we don't know where they're coming from, but where we're coming from, we have receipts. Komelik also stated that even before the manifestation has even been made to check on the server logs, the server logs have already been released to the PPCRV, which has been given the go signal to access them. Future requests for the server logs will have to be processed through the PPCRV. Meanwhile, Comelec have yet to give full details on the burned vote counting machines and ballots in Jones Isabela and Zamboanga del Sur. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City.
Now let's have a quick rundown of the local government officials who won in Visayas and Mindanao. Arthur Yap wins as Bohol governor, defeating Duterte's former cabinet secretary, Leoncio June Evasco Jr. Re-electionist Sambuanga City Mayor Maria Isabel Beng Climaco Salazar defeats outgoing Sambuanga City Representative Celso Lobregat, winning her third term as mayor. Former House Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez is re-elected as Davao del Norte's 1st District Representative. Oscar Moreno wins as Cagayan de Oro City Mayor after defeating Jose Gabriel Pompey Davinia, President Duterte's Social Media Director in 2016. And for the news abroad, President Donald Trump has unveiled new merit-based immigration policy plans that aim to increase the proportion of skilled migration to the United States. Beverly Saison will tell us why. U.S. President Donald Trump has outlined plans for a new U.S. immigration system designed to favor younger, better educated, English-speaking workers. In an address at the White House, he proposed moving away from the current system that favors applicants with family ties to the U.S. My plan expedites relief for legitimate asylum seekers by screening out the meritless claims. If you have a proper claim, you will quickly be admitted. If you don't, you will promptly be returned home. Currently, about two-thirds of the 1.1 million people allowed to emigrate to the United States each year are given green cards granting permanent residency because of family ties. Trump proposed keeping the overall number steady but shift to a merit-based system similar to one used in Canada, a plan he said would result in 57% of green cards to be based on employment and skills. Companies are moving offices to other countries because our immigration rules prevent them from retaining highly skilled and even, if I might, totally brilliant people. We discriminate against genius. We discriminate against brilliance. We won't anymore once we get this passed, and we hope to get it passed as soon as possible. Democrats dismissed his ideas as dead on arrival. They say the proposed new system fails to offer a route to citizenship for so-called dreamers, hundreds of thousands of people brought to the U.S. as children but who still have no legal right to remain. Democratic Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal said the proposals undermine America's family-based admission system. It does not include any protections for DREAMers. It does not include uh, any plan for the 11 million undocumented immigrants that are in this country that need a path to citizenship. Um, it undermines the family immigration system that has been the cornerstone of, of our country's immigration policy. President Trump has always taken a hard line on immigration and during his election campaign made the building of a wall along the Mexican border a key pledge. Beverly Sison, UNTV News and Rescue, USA. Residents in the capital of Mexico are being urged to stay indoors as a result of a siege of air pollution. Rosalie Cost will tell us why. Mexico's government ordered schools in and around Mexico City to be closed on Thursday in an extraordinary step taken due to elevated levels of pollution in the smog wreath capital. The Education Ministry said in a statement on Wednesday that the measure applies to public and private schools in the Mexico City metropolitan area. It recommended that children avoid exercise, remain indoors, and avoid using contact lenses. Pues mira, como tengo un bebé de un año y medio, estoy procurando este... I have a one-and-a-half-year-old baby, and I am looking to protect myself from getting sick, so as not to have medical expenses and from feeling bad. It is more preventative. Two of the city's principal seats of higher learning, the National Autonomous University of Mexico and the National Polytechnic Institute, also said they would suspend classes in the metropolitan area on Thursday due to the pollution. On Tuesday, the city's authorities declared an environmental emergency 
They have come under pressure to act due to reduced visibility caused by smoke and ash in the air during an extended dry spell. Smoke from nearby wildfires has pushed pollution to levels deemed potentially harmful to human health. The increase in the temperature will worsen air pollution in the cities because the chemical that pollution carries is dependent on the temperature. A prediction that is materializing is that there are an increasing numbers of forest fires because there's more drought, higher temperatures. We have already seen this in the United States in California. We've had a very clear example of this in the recent years. The Federal Environment Department said Wednesday that 3,800 firefighters are combating an average of about 100 fires a day in brush, scrub, agricultural and forest land throughout the country. Fire risk is highest in the spring for much of Mexico because the summer rainy season has not yet started. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. I am Pei, the architect behind buildings including the glass pyramid outside the Louvre in Paris has died at the age of 102. Tributes have been pouring in, remembering him for a lifetime of designing iconic structures worldwide. Pei's designs are renowned for their emphasis on precision geometry, plane surfaces, and natural light. Even though he formally retired from his firm in 1990, Pei was still taking on projects in his late 80s, such as museums in Luxembourg, Qatar and his ancestral home of Suzhou. Five people were injured after an F-16 fighter jet crashed into a warehouse in Paris, California. Meanwhile, four people have been killed after a small plane crashed three miles to the south of Dubai International Airport. Kath Dumaraos explains why. In Dubai, a small plane crashed south of Dubai airport, killing three Britons and one South African, UAE authorities said. The UK-registered DA-42 plane, four-seat plane, was owned by Flight Calibration Services, which is based at Shoreham Airport in West Sussex. The firm flies staff around the world to inspect and calibrate navigation aids, which include radars and landing systems for airports and airfields. The General Civil Aviation Authority says an investigation is underway. In the USA, an F-16 fighter jet being flown in routine training exercises crashed into a warehouse just outside March Air Reserve Base in Southern California on Thursday. The pilot ejected and five people on the ground were reported injured, military officials said. The extent of the injuries wasn't clear and the pilot was reportedly transported to a local hospital for evaluation. The fighter jet was assigned to the 114th Fighter Wing, Suix Falls, South Dakota, and was conducting a training mission for the North American Aerospace Defense Command, officials said. Officials said that the cause of the crash is under investigation. In El Salvador a 5.7 magnitude earthquake off the coast of Central America shook buildings in El Salvador and Nicaragua's capital Managua on Thursday, prompting people to evacuate, but there were no initial reports of major damage. The U.S. Geological Survey said the quake struck some 39 kilometers west-southwest of Hikililio, Nicaragua, at a depth of 71 kilometers. The epicenter was near to where the land borders of El Salvador, Honduras, and Nicaragua are at their closest point, and some buildings in Honduras were also evacuated, authorities said. Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. The first of the seven new World Cup 2022 stadiums opens in Qatar. Ferdi Petalio will tell us why. Qatar inaugurated the first of seven new World Cup 2022 stadiums on Thursday. Just weeks before a crucial FIFA summit, will decide whether to expand the tournament and potentially push it beyond the tiny Gulf states borders to accommodate a larger format. The Al Janoub Stadium, a fully air-conditioned 40,000-seat venue, is designed by late architect Zaha Hadid. It resembles the sail of a doe or a traditional wooden sailboat. FIFA will host its annual Congress in Paris on June 5th, where it is expected to make a final call on the expansion. Though any decision must be signed off by Qatar, 
the first Arab country to win hosting rights for the tournament in 2010. The finals will start in November 2022, having been moved from the usual June-July slot to avoid the searing summer heat. Qatar has pushed ahead with an ambitious scale-up of its infrastructure ahead of 2022 that includes $6 to $8 billion on stadiums and sporting facilities. Ferdi Petalio, UNTV News & Rescue More and more people are using a mobile app that can make someone look like their younger version. The application has features that are now trending on social media. Monoxon will tell us why. Many Filipinos are enticed with a mobile application that can make someone look like a woman or a man. The app also has a feature that can transform a person on a photo into a cute kid. The Snapchat features called Gender Swap and Baby Filter are now trending on social media. Just open the user-friendly mobile app and tap the filter button. Now, let's test if the gender swap feature is really effective by asking some people this Miss Universe question. What is more important to you, beauty or brain? Ano po mas mahalaga sa inyo, ganda o talino? Siyempre para sa akin talino. Kasi kung may talino ka, pwede kang gumanda, di ba? Kung mas mahalaga sa inyo, kagapuhan o talino? Talino, aalhin mo naman yung guwapo kung hindi naman siya matalino. Ano po mas mahalaga sa inyo, ganda o talino? At talino, bakit? Uh, Magiging pumunan ko sa lahat ng larang. Ano po, ano po mas mahalaga sa inyo, kagandahan o talino? Uh, ang mas mahalaga, ang pinakamahalaga sa akin, talino. Kasi kaya talino kasi ganyan. Kung paano mo magagawa sa bagay, kung paano mo resubay sa bagay. Kung may talino ka, makakagawa ka ng solusyon. Instant na pagkaroon ng problema. Mag mag magkakaroon ka na ako. Ano pong mas mahalaga sa inyo, ganda o talino? Talino, hindi na makawala sa tao yan. Yung ganda, pwede mawala ko sa tao. Pag nagdisgasya ka, mawawala. Now, with the baby filter, it seems great if used on some well-known personalities, like U.S. President Donald Trump. I wonder how French President Emmanuel Macron looked during his younger days. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un looks younger than ever because of the app. <laughs> Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe also looks cute. <laughs> what does Chinese President Xi Jinping look like? <laughs> How about Tatay Digong? Wow, he looks cute. Do not destroy my country, either by drugs or by committing rampant criminality, because I will. Let's see what our UNTV reporters looks like with the filter feature. Mula dito sa Pasay City, ako si Joan Nano. Mula dito sa PRCC, ako si Ivan. Mula dito sa Santa Rosa, Laguna, ako si April Senedoza. Mula dito sa Quezon City, ako si Rosa Lipos. Mula dito sa Quezon City, Ray Pilay. And now, let's see our good-looking UNTV News anchors. To give the parish pastoral council for responsible voting for glitches and other issues that marred the 2019 midterm elections are about to end their terms while some newcomers comers may join them soon. Meanwhile, most of the it is a fact that technology has come a long way and this is used by everyone in so many things and of course for fun and entertainment. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue. Fantastic. And those are the reasons behind the news this May 17, 2019. On behalf of Alex Baltazar. I'm Angelo Castro III. And before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know. We will always ask why. Good evening.
titignan po natin after 6.15 ng gabi ng May 13, uh, pumapasok ba talaga ang datos na nanggagaling sa mga VCM? Titignan po natin kung kompleto ang mga datos na yan from 6.15 hanggang uh, nag-up ulit ang mga tally board ng 1 uh, in the morning. Ang pangalawa po natin titignan ay kung uh, ano ba talaga ang nangyari at namatay po ang uh, tally boards natin, hindi nakatanggap ng information. So, uh, nandyan din po yan sa logs na sinusuri natin ngayon. Ang pangatlo po ay titignan naman natin ang kung kompleto ba ang data ng transparency server. Invitations have been sent out yet. Um, that might have been a verbal indication of when the proclamation could happen at the earliest. It's like a heads up, but again, no formal invitation has been issued yet. There are still some matters to be settled. Mr. President, I want to meet with you. At ako hihingi po, na i-relieve mo na lang ako dito sa kinakuupuan ko. Dahil hindi ko na kaya ang korupsyon dito sa ahensyang ito. Sa dami ko nang pumupunta rito sa consulate, eh, ngayon sa pangasa ngayon, mulang pa ho sila roon para asistahan yung mga taong Pilipino. Eh, tapos babawasan pa ho nila. O, eh, magsisiksikan ng mga tao. Anong oras pa na matatapos? Kaya hindi ho ako payag